that I'm going to say other current liabilities that Amazon is possibly more going to going to handle more of the sales tax than like a Shopify sometimes maybe but some states you might still have to deal with the sales tax so that's a whole nother issue that we might talk a little bit more about in the future that's point two it's not bad I can handle that but still they're nickel and dime in me man nickel and dime in me Amazon FBA fees so we've got then Amazon FBA fees 6311 6311 and then we've got Amazon sales tax payable again all right Amazon sales tax payable that's usually a liability but yeah it's 24 dollars 24 and then we've got the Amazon sales tax payable again Amazon sales tax payable for five dollars and then finally if it all comes out correctly notice it's it's trying to give me the number sometimes this is going to be Amazon I'm going to put it into an Amazon Amazon payment clearing account boom and that's going to be an other current liability account other current um, I'm sorry other current asset account and I'm going to say it's going to be just I'll just put it other current asset don't give me the and there we go. And now, it, now, if I did everything correctly, it's going to try to plug that number in for me to make my debits and credits correct. So if I, my debits and credits should be correct, 931.88. So 931.88. So it's a long, tedious process to do the journal entry with the Amazon ones oftentimes because, again, the reports that you have to deal with often have a whole lot of line items. And as we saw in the prior presentation in the Excel problem, we can group multiple line items into some of these line items. And again, the software, that's what some of the software integrations are attempting to do when they pull in the data from a third party platform, such as even the QuickBooks integration. It's not trying to pull in every customer sale, but summarizing the data, which means it's going to pull it in in like a journal entry format uh, generally. And if you get this in there all correctly, then the bottom line should still add up to the amount that Amazon's going to be distributing the deposit that's going to hit the bank account. Now, note that we put this this amount not into our checking account, but rather into a clearing account. It should be exact. So we could have put it like into our checking account, uh, even though we if we were to do that, we might want to use like a deposit form and we can put this whole long journal entry into a deposit form. And then when you do the bank feeds, it could match. You could use the matching mechanism to match out the bank feeds to what you put in there. But the clearing accounts are often a good system in case there's an issue. And this amount doesn't exactly tie out for whatever reason to what was put in to the bank account so that you could see something in the clearing account that doesn't clear because we should be able to tick and tie everything out in the clearing account. Hopefully I got all the account uh, types correct you could uh, put put some of these items in a cost of goods sold as opposed to an expense item like we talked about and we'll see some of the again the default settings that quickbooks uses when we use the quickbooks integration at least for the shopify uh side of things so you can get get an idea of what their defaults are and i think they do use cost of goods sold for some of the uh fees and whatnot all right uh so let's go ahead and save it and close it so i'll save it and close it and I probably, I should have put the date on the date of the deposit profits possibly, or the date that it was sent out, uh, which should be, let's just, what did I put on? <laughs> I think I put, I think I put 915 or something like that, or 925 might be a little bit more specific. Okay. Save it and close it. And then if I go to my balance sheet and we bring the date up, now we're working in the next months, 09, 01, uh, 25 to 09, 31, 25. Let's run this side by side, month by month now. And to, hold on a sec, 09, 30, 25. And let's run it there, okay. All right, so then, and now I wanna see it month by month. Let's make it from 08, 01. Two five, so I can see the two months. Okay, so this is as of the end of August, as of the end of September, 
if I go into, and I'm not going into the checking account, it's not there yet. It's in the, it should be in the clearing account. Clearing account, clearing account. There it is, pull it together for crying out loud. So there's our clearing account. And then when we make the deposit, it's gonna move from here up into uh, the checking account. And this is similar to what some of the integrations will do that we'll take a look at in a future presentation. And then on the income statement side, let's do the same thing. Let's just bring this up to 09325. And then let's say this is gonna be for, uh, for months. So I can see the months side by side. So now we've got our, our Amazon uh, income and refunds. So here's our Amazon income. And then the refunds are usually considered kind of contra income accounts. We put them in the income section. It would be nice if it was in the other order and you could order it with like account numbers, for example, and whatnot, or you could use like Z to A order. And I won't get into that now, but there's our, our uh, total income. And then we've got the gross profit and then we've got the charges and the Amazon uh, FBA fees. And again, you might put these into like cost to get sold as opposed to down here. But the general idea is that there are our expenses. We've got the more breakout of this information using this method than we did with the prior method. In the prior method, we, we kind of, we just entered the deposit and then we forced the deposit to be tied out to what we imagined.